So you got John Riggs here, and uh, thinking about the whole flight thing, the United Airways guy being dragged off the plane, reminded me of the time when I was stuck at Salt Lake Airport. Now, I lived in Idaho Falls for a while, and we had to catch a flight from Idaho Falls to Salt Lake to Yakima. Um, or, or, and then maybe like, maybe from Salt Lake to Seattle to Yakima or something like that. Um, what happened was every flight was overbooked. It was like going into Christmas weekend and they overbooked every flight. So before every flight until our flight, um, we kept hearing over the intercom that, um, like this flight is overbooked. And if you would like to, uh, volunteer to, uh, not get on this flight, we will accommodate you. And they're talking about giving away, I mean, they're going to put them up in a hotel and transportation and get their meals paid for, um, you know, for the inconvenience to uh, catch a flight the next day. Um, so they would sweeten the deal. They would do that. They'd give them like, you know, like free flight vouchers and stuff like that. Um, but then they literally said, like, you know, if nobody volunteered, they would just select someone at random. And how would you like to be the random selectee? And, um, my luck, and probably your luck too, of course they would call your name, you know? Um, but what if they called your name and you had... Now, we didn't have kids at the time, so it was just my wife and I. Um, but, you know, imagine if, like, you know, I was selected and, like, my wife would have had to fly, you know, one time and then I'd have to catch the next flight tomorrow or something like that. That would be terrible. You know, I'd, I'd just, you know, if that happened, then we'd probably both decline and say, well, then just give it to someone else. Give it to someone on standby because, you know, we're, we're flying together. Um, but then, you know, I looked it up and sure enough, it is like, it's like a federal crime to disobey. I mean, it's, and it's in the thing when you actually purchase your flight saying, like, if you're, you know, if you're selected... You have to obey, or it is a federal crime for I forgot for what reason, um, or something like that. It, it was like a, it was, it's a serious offense. It, it's the same kind of serious offense that you can't joke about. You know, you can't you can't joke you can't even joke about bringing a bomb on the plane. They don't they don't think it's funny, <laughs> and they'll arrest you on the spot. Um, but just thinking about that reminded me of that whole thing again. So uh, yeah, scary scary stuff for sure. And um, you know, thanks to everybody having a camera in their pocket. Um, you know, nobody, nobody can get away with stuff, you know, unfortunately, you know, unpopular opinion, unfortunately, um, he, he disobeyed and they, they forcefully removed him from the flight. Um, you know, maybe he'll get, I'm, I'm sure he'll be compensated. He doesn't even seem like, I mean, he was a doctor. He doesn't, he doesn't seem like the type who would go straight to social media. Like most Americans would, like most people would just be like, I'm holding a press conference and I'm going to be in a wheelchair with a neck brace and I'm getting free flights for life. I'm going to sue you for a gajillion dollars. But yeah, no, it just the, the, the whole situation reminded me of, man, they overbook flights all the time. And like assuming people are going to miss their flight or something like that, you know, just to accommodate for extra money or so, I don't know. It's a huge, I don't know. I, I try not to fly whenever I can. I'll drive. <laughs> That's how that works. But uh, yeah, this the whole thing reminded me of that whole time too. So, so if you're booking a flight, you might want to read the fine print saying like, hey, if you're if you're randomly selected, just you know, <laughs> get off the plane or or they'll they'll drag you off. Is, is how that works out. So thanks for watching. We'll see you.